name's Gillian Gray. I'm the current chair of the BPS Women in Pharmacology uh, Committee. And today I'm having a chat with Maria Belvesi, who's uh, this year's recipient of the AstraZeneca uh, Women in Pharmacology Prize. Okay, welcome, Hello, welcome, Gillian. welcome, Maria. So Maria's just given a fantastic lecture, which was very well received. And I just thought, wanted to pick up on one or two of the things that came out of the lecture. So I wonder what inspired you to become a scientist? I think I drifted, as I explained, into a degree in pharmacology, but then what inspired me to take that further into a PhD were the people and the places um, I worked in. So uh, certainly my BSc, uh, um, as I mentioned in the talk, at uh, Chelsea College, which was later King's College, the lecturers there were uh, very inspirational. and. Um, also the amount of, which I think is an important point to put across, it was good and it was interesting because we did a lot of practical work, which mm. I think is something that we don't do enough exactly. of now um, in teaching at the, at the degree level. And something that our Centre for Integrative Physiology Pharmacology has been trying to address. So I think we uh, had a passion for it because we were really doing it on the bench. I think that's something that um, we've tried to build back into our teaching programs at Imperial, but also I know with Sue Brown at King's. Okay, thank you, thanks. I think the, the PhD programs in general have probably grown across the UK, um, but it's what, goes on, what happens after that, moving on from a PhD to postdocs and, and developing your career is, is much more difficult. Obviously, yeah. mentors and, and role models are quite important in that. You mentioned Peter Barnes as being an important mentor. Yeah. Your life. What, what, what was it that made him a particularly good mentor, do you think? I guess he just gave me enthusiasm for the job um, and a desire to find out the answer. Um, he's a very inspirational speaker um, and I guess for those reasons it pushed me further to, to, to that area and to find out exactly the answer to whatever the scientific question was but it is getting harder and uh, I was lucky enough to after the PhD get a career development mm. fellowship from the Wellcome Trust. Now the uh, fellowship schemes are extremely competitive, uh, there's much less opportunity to get funding mm. um, and at least for careers in bench science it's getting harder and harder so I think we should also be instructing or um, educating our our students on uh, science related careers as well because not everybody mm. will be lucky enough to get a fellowship or will have the opportunity to continue doing research exactly. at, at a basic level. Exactly, that's one of the things we have in our Women in Pharmacology um, mentoring programme, we have mentors from across the scale, people who have set up their own companies, people who work in academia and industry shows there is actually a big span of things there you can is, do with yeah. your career now. You don't have to become just a standard, go through it down the academic route. Sure. So um, you're an ambassador for women at Imperial. What, what does that involve? Does it involve giving career advice to women at different stages or is it encouraging no, enthusiasm? Um, or? Mainly it's about um, influencing our management to uh, the senior management at Imperial to um, take on board initiatives which will provide women with more influence either within the organisation but also outside the organisation. So one of the things during my time as ambassador for women was to try to encourage women to apply for board positions with the research mm. councils and we were actually very successful with that with several people getting on the Wellcome Trust, the BBSRC and also the MRC uh, boards. What what uh, what kind of things do they do at Imperial to encourage younger women? Are there specific initiatives? Do you have mentoring programs in Imperial for that kind of thing, for example, or is it in, is it tend to be informal mentoring? No, uh, for the PhD students we have a mentoring system. So everyone registering for a PhD has um, has a mentor. There's quite a lot of effort put into the postdocs as well, mm. and we've had initiatives such as the Springboard initiative. Mm. Uh, for basically um, coaching and preparing female postdocs, which has been very successful, I think. So you're the mother of a young child. How, how do you find that has an impact on your career? Um, I think in a in a very positive way, um, and it it's become it's made me become a bit more organised for a start. Um, 
much more fulfilled when you're happy at home, um, you're happy in work. Mm. Um, it's something that I'm glad I didn't miss the boat with. Uh, and yeah, my son gives me joy every day. So consequently, that filters into all the other aspects of your life. Absolutely, yeah. That's one of the things that postdocs often bring up when when's the best time to have a baby when you're developing your career as a woman, but it's, <laughs> it's difficult to give advice about that, doesn't it? Isn't yeah. it? I think that you know, it fits in and supports your career. I think, and think of examples, people have had children at different phases of their life and been successful. Yeah, I think it's, it's helpful to have a supportive family mm. and partner, obviously. Um, and uh, but I don't think there's any right time um, and I certainly in our organization um, we have a lot of senior professors and all of them I think have families um, and have had children so I, I think there's many examples of women doing the balancing mm -hmm. their career. Mm -hmm. Something else you did in your career development was moving between academia and industry and do you think that was an advantage to your career development? Absolutely yeah. Yeah, I, um, I think, especially uh, as I explained in my career, especially when there's a block and your funding runs out and you don't know what's happening next, uh, the best thing to do is, is move sideways or move to something else, do something else uh, and not be become uh, embittered with the situation or be upset about not receiving the funding. Mm. And uh, what I did, I didn't realise how good it would be for me until I'd done it. Um, but it gave me a whole different skill set and a uniqueness which uh, has enabled a lot of collaboration, a lot of funding opportunities, which I wouldn't have had if I hadn't done it. So um, I am I'm very grateful for all of the... Uh, for the way it all panned out, basically, and for the people I met in industry and for what they taught me. I think what came out from your, present, your talk was that you've had great opportunities and made the most of them, really. You've really um, made good contacts and built on them, which is very inspirational, I think. Yeah, I, well, as I said before, I think that's the message to the younger uh, members of the society is that networking is very important. Yeah, absolutely. Getting to know people, but getting yourself known mm. is, is the other thing. It's, it's extremely important. Mm -hmm. Um, for men and women. And finally, you mentioned that you had um, benefits from professional mentoring as a more senior woman. Do you think that's something you should try to encourage uh, Absolutely, more widely? yeah. Very much so. Um, I went through the uh, UK SET scheme, so this was with a professional mentor, and I, I actually think you get a different aspect mm -hmm. from a professional mentor. Mm -hmm. I, I think you should have both academic, science, mentoring, but also someone who's a professional uh, life coach, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, I think they have a different b way of looking at things, a different balance, and they're looking at your whole life, not just work. Mm. Yeah, so I, I think that's been really valuable. Yeah, and it was a great scheme that they set up. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not sure they have it. They, they've had they their funding with yeah, exactly. so it's not so much so available. It's not there anymore. But there but are there, there are still coaches around, so it's maybe something we should think about. I mean, a, in a lot of and and I think we should be lobbying the universities to do more of it. I mean, what we talk about at Imperial quite a lot is we've done lots at the postdoc level to support postdocs, but there's very little to support PIs and professors, yeah. and it's so hard mm. uh, at the moment. Yeah, it's very difficult um, time. Because you have to be everything. You you know, you have to be a, a safety expert. You have to go out and do PR. You have to examine the students. You have to do this. Uh, your, your job description is endless. Mm. And I think you need these sorts of resources to enable you to cope with what is a very demanding job. Okay, well, thank you very much, Maria, for a very um, entertaining lecture.